So then the question is, well, what, what kinds of violations do we have here? Well, we talked about <coughs> serial correlation and heterodidactic. And we talked about them individually and independently of one another. And the assertion when we talked about serial correlation was that it was a pathological disease of time series observations because events today are correlated or driven in part by events yesterday and the day before and the day before that. When we talked about heteroscedasticity, we talked about it in the context of, of uh, cross-section data, observing a set of firms at a point in time, observing a set of people at the same point in time, and so on. But we didn't try to mash the two together. It wasn't until the 70s or 80s when Engels did his first work with Garch that he was able to marry serial correlation and heteroscedasticity together. And that's a whole different ball of wax from these two individually. And when would we? When did I plan to talk about Garch? Well, we only have 14 weeks in the semester, so Garch is a topic for the spring semester. Um, and it's very interesting, and it's really important for people in the MSFE program. As you well know, that you can uh, you can now bet on volatility contrasts in the markets. So somebody out there spends a lot of time playing around with Arch and Garch and Garch M and so on and so forth. Um, and the people who are good at it, I suppose, in recent months have made a fortune betting on uh, volatility. So serial correlation is a problem of time series. Heterosynesticity is a problem of cross-sections. Which brings me back to the question about ARIMA models. And some of you, in spite of the fact that we didn't talk explicitly about ARIMA models, wanted, were in a big rush to go down that road before you got to either the spring semester of this class or in the William Way's time series class. Who are the two guys credited with the early developments in ARIMA model. Box and Jenkins. So what was Box and Jenkins big? Where did they, what was their origin? Where did they start? Where did this whole ARIMA stuff start to come up? Of course, because we're in the business school, we're all going to say, oh, business forecasting. Ah, wrong. Those two guys had their genesis in engineering and quality control. And the question is, the question, one of the questions that comes up in quality control is, how do you detect when something's going wrong? You've got pieces rolling off a conveyor belt, and the mean diameter and the variance of the diameter is supposed to be the same, regardless of when it dropped off the conveyor belt, whether it was yesterday morning or this morning or 10 mornings ago. And so the Box-Jenkins approach was a way to systematize the specification, estimation, and testing of autoregressive moving average models. Now, we laid the groundwork for Professor Way to talk about the box Jenkins approach, because you know now you know all about hypothesis testing. You've had a rudimentary introduction to an autoregressive process, and indirectly, a rudimentary introduction to what a moving average process looks like. And so, Box and Jenkins said, suppose that we had a sequence of ball bearing diameters all with a date associated with it. So it's, it's not just ball bearings that we selected at random, but they were produced at different points in time on our production process. And one of the things that we know is that there is wear and tear on the machine when it makes these ball bearings. And so the diameter that we're getting off the machine today should in part depend on the diameter that we're rolling off at yesterday, and so on and so forth. Uh, the box Jenkins approach also had its genesis in physics. One of the things that fascinates physicists is Brownian motion. And so we use, we keep track of how, where the particle is and how fast it's going as it's floating around in the box. So the idea behind box Jenkins approach is the following. <coughs> With rudiment rudimentary form, Box and Jenkins said things like, they might say, this is what the, this is the data generating process, I think. But how do I know that what generated the data was an ARMA 2-2 process? I don't. So I need to be able to test for it. So what Box and Jenkins came up with was the algorithm for identifying Basically, the Box and Jenkins procedure is to identify the model. Do we like AR2, MA0, ARMA22, so on and so forth? Do we want to account for seasonality or not? Do we have some kind of intervention variable on the right-hand side? Do we need to work in partial differences or first differences? So the integrate part is first differences in the variance. Game. So sometimes you hear people talk about a REMA. The next point, once you've identified some candidate models, you have to estimate the phi's and the thetas. Then you need to test 
the model. So presumably somewhere along the way you had another data set or you set aside some data. So once you've identified a model or some several models, you've estimated the parameters of the different models and now you're ready to use some of the data that you set aside to see how good a job you can do forecasting. And then maybe revise the model. So Fox and Jenkins developed the, the routines for doing all of that.